Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from June 9th until June 16th, where we have a very dynamic energy underway, and perhaps you're already feeling it, certainly as we've been moving through eclipse season and an interesting Mercury retrograde. So over this next week, we're going to have the June 10th Gemini solar eclipse. We're going to see Mars enter Leo, where he gains his strength and his confidence He's ready to take a risk and go for it. And we're also going to have a very potent second meeting between Saturn retrograde in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. It is their second square, and I'll be talking more about that as it's quite significant. In this podcast, we talk about astrology and the energies, and I share with you the intuitive visuals and messages that I've been receiving. And there's been some really interesting ones that have been coming through, so we will touch on those in this podcast episode as well. We are moving through Gemini season, where the sun is now entering the third deacon of Gemini, and the third deacon is between 20 and 29 degrees, and this is usually a place of mastery, of applying what you've learned, of understanding more about the archetypal energies of an astrology sign, and then really applying them in your life, understanding how to work with them consciously and what they mean. Gemini energy can be beautifully described as a restaurant, the type of restaurant where you go in, you sit down, you order your food. And this is because a restaurant is composed of many people with multiple needs and simultaneous activity happening all at the same time. And if you've ever worked in a restaurant, you understand this very well, that a Gemini environment is about multitasking, multiple things happening at the same time, and how you can be efficient, how you can move the energy. So think about a restaurant where you go and sit down, you're with your family or some friends, everyone looks at the menu, the menu has multiple choices, everyone chooses what they want, and the server is the one who makes sure the details are correct, and then relays that to the kitchen that then creates the food. Obviously, you know how a restaurant operates, but this is a wonderful way to think of Gemini energy, where a lot is going on, and sometimes the details are missed, like when you want something on the side, and instead they put it on the sandwich. Or if your order is taking longer because the server got distracted and forgot to place your order right away. All of these are parts of the Gemini energy, where as long as you're moving, you're managing the energy. As long as you're keeping up and keeping pace, you can be on top of it. However, at the same time, this can also feel overwhelming. It can feel overwhelming to the nervous system if it's too much at once. It can be overwhelming to the mind if you're forgetful, if you're not writing down orders. Uh, There can be a lot that you have to get up to speed in. And that Gemini energy is comfortable with the juggling, is comfortable with everything happening at once because the energy can stay mentally focused on these short-term tasks. Now, I've worked in restaurants, a few in fact, and one of the best tips that was given to me from another server was that you should always have something in your hands when you're working in a restaurant. You're either bringing someone a bill or bringing them their food or clearing off a table or bringing more napkins. The efficiency of always having something in your hands, something moving, is also very Gemini. Gemini rules the hands, the arms, how we use them. So this is a time when you could feel that life is hectic, it's busy, there's a lot going on. How do you manage it? How do you care for it? Well, with Gemini, you do what you can to stay in motion, to keep things moving, and to be aware that the more you can do at the same time, the more efficient it can be. Now, of course, not everyone is made this way, and the Gemini energy can be too fast. It can be too much. It can be overwhelming. You could be blit and not sure what to choose or what direction to go. There can even be a lot of thinking and a lack of clarity for action. So that's also part of this current energy where we have Mercury retrograde in Gemini still making a square 
to Neptune in Pisces. This energy is going to ease up a bit into the middle of June as that Mercury retrograde moves away from that direct contact to Neptune in Pisces where it's been experiencing a square. Now every square energy can bring up tension or frustration. It can be that when push comes to shove of something needs to give and there can be a tightness. The energy can feel tight or stuck, but with Neptune, there's a surrender, there's a release. And in fact, that is the superior energy right now because that Neptune energy is reminding us that we don't have to figure it all out. We don't have to know all the details or all the particulars that some things are meant to be let go of. And this is a very strong energy in the Gemini solar eclipse, which is happening at 20 degrees on June 10th. Now, I've been doing a few shows on this, so I don't want to repeat myself, uh, but just know that this Gemini solar eclipse is happening at 20 degrees of Gemini in your natal astrology chart. So you want to locate the house where you have 20 degrees of Gemini. And this is where a restart is occurring. And that restart is strong because Mercury retrograde in Gemini is conjunct the sun and the moon. So this eclipse has the powerful influence of a restart. Every solar eclipse is a new moon, so it's already a new beginning of some sort. And energetically, how I'm feeling this is some type of cosmic reset, helping us going deeper into our own mental programming, even where we've been spinning. And I'm getting that message right now of when you are updating a device, updating your phone, computer, whatever it might be, and it keeps spinning and spinning in the updating. And it's not fully loading where the information is trying to process, but it's taking forever, which would be the Mercury retrograde influence of it's not happening. There's delays. There's things that are being uh, slowed down when maybe what you have to do is turn off the device completely and reset it. Perhaps you even have to do a factory reset. And that's what this energy is. We are resetting something in our lives, something that has been perhaps mentally consuming us, or we've been processing it. We've been thinking it through, overthinking it. Maybe there's just been an overload in our lives, an overload of energies. This is a reset where you come back to yourself. And I feel this reset is very significant because it's an eclipse. And because it's working directly with Mercury retrograde, we are doing some very deep reprogramming, recalibrating so that we can clear out, clear out some things that we maybe weren't even aware of that we were fixated on or overthinking, uh, things that we've always told ourselves. These could be the narratives or the stories that you've carried for your whole life or most of your life. There is a higher truth coming through. There is more information coming in so that you can rewrite a story, rewrite an internal narrative. And this can be very supportive, kind, loving, gentle, empowering, where there's something here that Maybe information comes through where you're like, I never thought of it that way, or I didn't see the gifts of it, or I didn't understand the bigger picture. There's information that could come in, and this could be through another person or a communication, but it could be through your own intuition, because we do have these three planets in Gemini, Sun, Moon, Mercury retrograde, squaring that Neptune and Pisces that wants us to get out of our head and open up to a bigger spiritual understanding, more intuitive messages, more perspectives that we wouldn't normally consider. So this is moving us outside of what we've known, outside of our standard thought processes. And that factory reset button could work quickly. You could feel it. You could sense it. 
And that quick energy is Gemini because Gemini is speedy and it wants to stay on task and get one thing done so it can get the next thing done. Now, this is also a time of also being very conscious of your own thought patterns, of those stories and those narratives. Because Mercury is retrograde, it's bringing information back to the sun and back to the moon. So back to the sun is our sense of self, our ability to develop confidence in who we are, as well as to continually grow in consciousness, in knowing ourselves, in knowing that we are meant to evolve, change, and grow. Mercury is bringing information back that maybe we didn't catch the first time. And then Mercury is also connecting with that moon in Gemini. The moon is how you receive the information. It's how you take it in, how you feel it, how you process it. So we have multiple parts of ourselves right now very aware of the stimuli in the world, but aware of what resonates with us. And I feel like part of what we're understanding is I'm seeing it as a dividing line of who you are now and who you were, or what your truth is now and what it no longer is, or what resonates, what doesn't, what's in alignment, what's not. There's something where we're meant to gain clarity, but also stepping back from judgment, self-judgment, any messages that we give ourselves that limit who we are or that keep us constrained or small. This is a solar eclipse that is breaking us free from what that energy has been. And it's showing us a new path, a new direction, a new start. But it's also, as I said, a restart. Now, Mercury retrograde is the ruler of this solar eclipse. So that's why it's more prominent. But then it's also conjunct the sun and the moon, as we discussed. So it really has significance here. It's really allowing us to be more mindful and more aware of what we're focusing on and to look at how to evolve a story, how to evolve something we've been telling ourselves so that we can do so with greater love, acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness, which are also part of those Neptune and Pisces energies that we're feeling as well. Now, the other energy that's been playing out still is that we have this Mars in Cancer that's been opposing Pluto in Capricorn. This energy was exact on Saturday, June 5th, but it builds up and then it lets go slowly and it's still in play for this solar eclipse. So it could have been an emotionally uncomfortable time where there's something coming up that you are feeling or battling within yourself or that you are literally feeling a power struggle with another person over something. And because this Mars is in Cancer and it's moving towards the very last degree of Cancer. So the 29 degree point is a critical degree or anoretic degree. And it's about a completion. It's about a graduation. So here this Mars in Cancer has been really uncomfortable for the past week because he's been in a standoff with this Pluto in Capricorn that's been challenging him. And Mars in Cancer can have this bottled up anger or frustration, can have these emotional waves that feel really big, that really rock and roll him. And this can feel like something is unfolding or something is happening that's been very emotional and very intense. And in cancer, it can be something from the past, uh, whether that is earlier this year or something from years ago gets stirred up and comes up. This Mars in cancer is also feeling like he has to defend himself or defend something. That can be his first reaction or his first response when he's challenged. But I feel like what's unfolding here is that we're seeing some of our previous emotional programming popping up and it can really grab you and yank you into an undertow. And it could feel like that because this opposition to Pluto and Capricorn is significant. It's interesting because Mars is actually the younger brother of Pluto. And they're both warriors. They're both willing to do what needs to happen to make progress, to move us forward. And so you have a standoff between big brother Pluto, little brother 
Mars. Mars can be reactionary, defensive, very self-protected, wants to be alone, wants to do things his own way so that he feels safe and has that need to feel safe. And this really stirs up our emotional world because that opposition to Pluto is showing you exactly where you're ready to claim your power. But there could be a part of you that's almost connected to the inner child or a younger version of yourself that is afraid or doesn't know how or has never been here before. And that Pluto challenge is really bringing up a fear of what if I'm not able to do this? What if I'm not powerful? What if I can't change this? What, what if, what if, what if? And the Pluto energy wants us to evolve, wants us to transition into a higher place of personal power, wants us to see a fear and move through it. So there's been a deep transformation that's been very emotional. Again, it can bring up power struggles and battles and things that either you're dealing with outside of yourself or you could feel that you've been struggling with different parts of your own consciousness where your younger consciousness associated with that inner child just wants to be heard and to feel safe and to be okay Whereas that Pluto evolutionary consciousness is ready for a part of you to sit at the adult table, to move to the adult table where you've matured, you've grown. There's something here that maybe you've been really deeply feeling and it can be very private and it's something that you're ready to turn a page and that page is turning as Mars enters Leo on June 11th. And this is a welcome change because Mars is very powerful in the fire signs. And in Leo, he really gets his confidence back. So this transition between Cancer and Leo is moving from the softness, openness, vulnerable parts of Cancer that are very much needed and connect us with more of our feminine energy, our feminine truth. A sense of this is how I really feel and I trust it. I trust how I feel. Then the journey into Leo is a strengthening where it's like, yes, I do trust myself and I'm going to further strengthen that trust and be who I am. Be stronger in what I need and what I'm about. So Mars and Leo is going to be ready to make some moves or to switch up what he focuses on because now he's going to have a new sense of strength, confidence. He's going to be willing to take a risk. And I feel like this is a Mars that's ready to take charge. So with this eclipse, again, this goes back to the factory reset. Something is being reset at a deeper level. Now it's interesting because when Mars is in Cancer, Cancer is ruled by the moon. Then Mars enters Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. And we have here the solar eclipse where the sun and moon are conjunct. So what we have is an ego reset, a reset of who we are, what we claim, what we want. A commanding sense of self is emerging that is going to be new. And it's going to feel that way. And it can even feel that way in a sense like you don't know how to exactly describe it. You just feel the shift. You could feel it in your body as Mars is all about our physical energy, our activity levels, how we feel energetic every day, and how our body is speaking to us. So there is this emotional changeover. There's some kind of physical change. And then there's also energies working with us mentally. So here we have multiple parts of our energy field experiencing this solar eclipse, which means take really good care of yourself. Always drink more water. Make sure you're getting enough protein, vegetables, the food that your body really needs. There can also be extra fatigue as we're processing so much. There can also be disruptive energies where you don't sleep through the night as easily or there's more happening in the dream state. There's more moving through us. This is a very big energy period and it's just taking things hour by hour, day by day that will help with this reset, that will help with really integrating these energies and hearing yourself, listening to yourself and trusting yourself in a much higher way. Now, Venus is also in Cancer now, 
where she feels comfortable, she takes a break, she's ready to just enjoy life a bit more. And she's going to be active on June 12th where she will have a square to Chiron in Aries at 12 degrees and then a sextile to Uranus in Taurus at 13 degrees. So this could be a weekend where some things come up that at first maybe triggers you or just kind of gets into a sensitive spot, but then you move through it. Then something shifts where you can either shake it off and it doesn't bother you that much, or you're realizing maybe something is no longer true for you. And I feel like there's something where this Venus in Cancer, she's bringing us back into our emotional home to check in on ourselves, check in on what feels right, what you need, what is really best for you right now, what is nurturing. But she's doing it from an energy that feels transformative, where we're different now. I mean, 2020 shaped us all. And now our lives are different. Our priorities are different. So don't be afraid of the ongoing changes in your value system, in what you need, in what matters to you. Because I feel like this Venus, she has a very soft touch and she wants to offer kindness. She wants to settle us down, settle down all of our systems, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, uh, endocrine system, etc., the body's systems, and she really helps that in a soothing manner. And also water is essential with these energies in Cancer. Uh, they're always important when planets are in water signs, but I feel like there's this flushing. There's this flushing out and this calming down that's really important right now. And in fact, it's something that you can intentionally practice. How do I calm? How do I soothe? How do I take care of myself right now, especially during these big energy systems that are coming through and affecting my personal energy systems? So take time to slow down and pause as needed because Venus is this very loving influence that reminds us to trust ourselves, to love ourselves, and that it will be very supportive in ways that we don't always understand right away. And keep in mind, she is also ruled by this solar eclipse as well because she's in Cancer and Cancer is ruled by the moon. So she's also feeling this energetic reset, this return to self, return to your internal home. And what does that mean now? What does that look like now? What brightens you up? What lights you up? What feels good in your world and in your personal life and in your personal environment? This is where you could have some new revelations around what you need and what you want every day because of how you have changed and because of how you are changing. Now, one more thing about the eclipse is that it's at 20 degrees and then the sun moves forward as it always does and the sun moves one degree a day. And so the sun gets to 23 degrees of Gemini three days later and will make an exact square to Neptune in Pisces at 23 degrees on June 13th. So there could still be that sense of confusion. Um, I'm not clear yet. There's more happening. I can feel it. I can sense it. And it's a wonderful time over the next week to trust your energy. Just trust what you're feeling. And allow that to guide you. So for example, if you're feeling a restlessness, which is Gemini, and you need to get moving, then that is your body telling you to go for a walk, to put down the device and get moving. Now you could also feel that there's times when you're just so tired and that's the Neptune and Pisces and you can't do one more thing. So trust that message as well, whether that's taking a nap, going to bed early, whatever it might be. That's also energy speaking to you. And it's going to be some very big messages here over the next week because that energy exchange between Sun and Gemini, which is running the restaurant, being in the restaurant, and then Neptune and Pisces, which is I'm just going to go do nothing and sit in a hammock with a book, means that there's parts of ourselves that are going back and forth and almost feeling like you don't know what to do. That could literally be part of this week where there's various priorities, various energies. You don't know what to do. 
And the way to trust this is first to trust yourself, trust what you're feeling, trust if your body is hungry, trust if you need more water, you know, tend to the basics first, and then give yourself time to do what you need to do, even if it's taking a short break or going for a short walk. Remember, Gemini energy wants to move fast, but it needs it to be done in smaller increments of time. So it's going for a half hour walk or resting for half an hour or having smaller bites of protein, etc. It's like, what can you do incrementally that keeps the energy moving even when you do feel perhaps sluggish or slower at times? And this is always good to know because then it helps you with your own expectations and it helps you moderate your energy. So from June 10th, until June 13th, this is when we have to take extra good care of ourselves and our energy systems and just do less. Do less and do it for shorter amounts of time. Just tell your boss that. I'm sure it'll be totally fine. I have to do less, I can't do more, and I can only be at work for half an hour. Okay, so switching gears, let's now discuss the second Saturn retrograde in Aquarius squaring Uranus in Taurus, which is exact on June 14th. Now, this is one of the biggest energies throughout the year. Throughout 2021, these two outer planets meet in a square three times, and it first happened in the middle of February, February 17th. Now it's happening June 14th, and it will complete December 24th. And this is an important energy because it's a square, which is about change and growth, a tension, challenge, things needing to shift, something needing to give. And it's between these two outer planets that have very different intentions. Saturn is about our responsibilities and commitments. Uh, you need to be diligent. You need to show up. You need to take care of this. Whereas Uranus is freedom. And don't tell me what to do, and I want independence, and I want to be free. And these two are in a conversation that is very back and forth, where one is stronger than the other every time they meet. So the first time they met in February, both planets were direct, and this was an energy of revelation. February, what was revealed to you in February? What came through? What developed? What happened? And maybe it was significant, especially if you have planets or points at seven degrees because Saturn and Uranus were in a square at seven degrees. And since it was the first time they met, the energy was intense, perhaps a bit more explosive and unexpected, and it provided a higher consciousness of priorities. What is important to you in your life? What matters to you? What do you need? What is your value system? Now they're meeting up for the second time at 13 degrees, but this time Saturn is retrograde and that makes Uranus and Taurus stronger. So that Uranus energy of freedom, going your own way, trusting what you want, being clear on your values, what you need, that is much stronger right now than the Saturn in Aquarius, which is all about the people you know, perhaps what people are telling you or what their opinions are, or what they think. There's a lot of conversations in Aquarius and there's a sense of getting the bigger picture of it all. But something came up in February that showed you or revealed something in your life now in June, there is more support for doing exactly what you want to do, where yes, you still have commitments, you still have responsibilities and things to take care of, but this is a universal push to go your own way, to trust your path, to really look at what lights you up and what reveals to you more of how you want to live your life, what your values are, what your priorities are, and that's because Uranus breaks us free of our own constraints, breaks us free and awakens us to more of what we want, which is that Taurus energy. This is what I want. This is what matters to me. This is what I need. So we each have an emphasis on this energy. Now, in December, 
they're going to meet up again for the third and final time, again, December 24th, and that will be at 11 degrees. And when they're at 11 degrees, Uranus will be retrograde and Saturn in Aquarius will be direct. So I feel like what's happening right now is that we're understanding more about ourselves and our lives, what we want, what we need, and we're being given this push to follow it, to trust it, uh, to go your own way, to do what you need to do. I feel like this energy connects us with an overall life perspective or life plan, an overall understanding of what you need in your life to live a good life or to know more about what matters to you. And this can even be on a daily basis uh, where you see how you're spending your time and how you want to change it or do something differently. So of course, there's many, many ways this energy can show up and unfold. But what it's revealing to you is that there's more to life than what you've known. There's more to life than maybe how you've lived it or what you've experienced. What is that for you? And I feel it as an energy that lights us up, especially because it's happening very closely to this Gemini solar eclipse restart reset. So something's coming through that you're meant to really trust. And again, this can be in very big ways, like if you're doing a big life transformation, or it can just be in a subtle way. And that happens if the planet is not directly connecting to any of your natal planets. So if you have planets at 13 degrees of the fixed signs, and the fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, you're really feeling this energy right now. If you have any energies between 7 and 13 degrees, planets or points between 7 and 13 degrees, you're also probably feeling this throughout this year more personally. Whereas if you do not have any planets or points between 7 or 13 degrees, it's not working with you as personally, but you're still feeling it. It's still basically in the air. It's still in the collective consciousness. It's still an energy moving around the planet and shifting the world, but it just works with each of us differently. So you're going to feel it most intensely if you have planets or points in the fixed signs, and it signals that at a soul level, you're ready for this change. You're ready. You knew at a soul level, this change would be happening at this time in your life. Whether you are 24 or 65, whatever age you're at, you as a soul were ready for these dynamic changes to happen. Now, one of the visuals I was getting around this energy between the square is scaffolding being removed. And scaffolding would be those temporary structures that are put up outside buildings, whether they're building that building or renovating it or doing repairs. The scaffolding has been there for a purpose. And the scaffolding has supported a process, supported something, whether that is through a renovation or for something new. But I've been seeing the scaffolding falling away. And we might see this in the physical world. Uh, we might just be feeling this energetically where whatever was outside of you that was holding you up or propping you up, maybe it was a facade. Maybe it wasn't truly you. Maybe it was hiding your authentic self. Uh, maybe this energy of a scaffolding has been really a beautiful gift for what you've been healing and working on internally. But the scaffolding falling away, and this, this can happen quickly, like a collapse, but it can also happen gently, like it just dissolves or it melts, but it just is removed. And there's something that we're breaking out of. We're releasing ourselves from it. And that scaffolding is interesting because it feels like the Saturn energy of a structure, but then the Uranus energy is the deconstruction, the removal, the uh, break free from something, which is the more powerful energy right now. So this is a beautiful time to check in at where you're being released and set free. And this can feel vulnerable. It can feel raw. It can also feel very strengthening and like you don't have to hide a part of yourself anymore 
whether that's from yourself or from other people, from family, from friends, this scaffolding that's being removed and collapsing has served a purpose, has been beneficial for a process, but I feel like now there is this release and the energy is open. There's this opening, there's this authenticity that's shining out. And I'm actually seeing this as a beautiful building that's been renovated, freshly painted, updated. It just looks gorgeous and it's been taken care of. And I feel like this energy here is showing us where we're ready to stand more powerfully in our own authenticity. And it has less to do with other people, which is that Saturn in Aquarius. It has less to do with what other people need or what other people want because they are also being gifted with this opportunity as well. So there could be people in your life, especially say in a workplace, in family, in friendships, anywhere in your life where people are breaking free, breaking out, and they are just done. There's something we're done with. And again, it can be a physical part of our life or it can be an energy. We're done living a certain way. We're done being a certain way. We're done with something, but it's our own choice. There's a choice here and it's probably been rising up. Um, it could have started again in February and it's rising up and it's really coming out strongly here in June. Then when we look further down the year into December, when we have the third and final interaction of this energy, Saturn in Aquarius is going to be strong, but it's strong in a sense of independence, strong in a sense of self, because that Aquarius energy, what it does is it helps us know who we are by going out into the world, by connecting with many people, understanding the diversity of the world, understanding more about what people think or what's going on. But ultimately then that Aquarius energy brings you back to yourself and it supports the individuation process where you know yourself as an individual. You know how you're different. You know what makes you unique. And it's through that understanding that you become more fully yourself. So here we have a process throughout 2021. We're each becoming more of who we are. Again, it can feel vulnerable. You can feel nervous. You can feel raw all part of the process, but the universe is supporting this. The universe is strengthening us because it's really what's needed right now on the planet. And this also connects with the new earth energies, with the new experiences we are creating in our lives built on a higher truth, a higher authenticity of this is who I am. And I'm meeting this part of myself. So we're all right on time for meeting a new part of ourselves, establishing and knowing new values, the values being how you want to live your life, what's important to you on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, basically where you want to spend your energy. And this pertains to work and career, as well as hobbies and passions, where uh, like a beautiful friend of mine is cultivating this gorgeous garden right now for herself and her family. And that's where she's really investing her time and she's still seeing the fruits of her labor. And it's something that's really important to her. It's always been one of her values. So that's what we're looking at. What matters to me in this life? Because the universe is helping you get on that track if you haven't been on it. If you have been on it, you're going to feel a strengthening, a clarity, a certainty, and ongoing support for following the truth of who you are. So this beautifully ties in with that factory reset button. It also correlates to Mars entering Leo with the strength in self, a new confidence in who you are. And it also is showing us that we're in process and that's okay. We each move at our own pace in our own way. Trust that for yourself. Trust your pace. Trust what you need. Don't expect yourself to be further along if that's not how your energy works. All you can do is trust yourself and be yourself and that's exactly where you'll be supported because that's where the energy will meet you. 
so yes, it's a big energy time. We're all feeling it in multiple ways and we're ready. We're right on time for this. So it's also really quite exciting. Now, I realize that part of this energy can show up in so many ways in our real world and it can certainly show up through finances. There's a lot right now with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, there's a lot happening with energies of money and financial markets shifting and changing. That's going to be part of these ongoing changes. And in fact, it's going to be a significant theme throughout the second half of this year, financial changes. Now, what I recommend is actually someone who is a financial expert. He's a stock market analyst and an astrologer. His name is Raymond Merriman. I do not know Mr. Merriman personally, but I have followed his work. And you can find out more about him at mmacycles.com, mmacycles.com, because he talks about the financial markets and he incorporates astrology. So you may be interested in that, if this is an area of your life that you're really on top of right now, he may be a good resource for you. Now, remember to be clear in your intentions at this time, uh, to be very aware of what you're resetting in your life. What is your factory reset bringing up for you? Because the energy here in the middle of June powerfully supports us in our new intentions and in what calls to us now. So write out those intentions, do what you need to do for a new moon ritual or a solar eclipse ritual and trust what is calling you because there's a reason. There's a reason it's speaking to you and you can absolutely trust it. Now, some of you have asked how you can learn more about astrology transits and I have a class for that. It's an intermediate level class. I have it on sale at 50% off. You can see it below this podcast and it teaches you how to track these transits in your own chart so that you can see where transiting Neptune is. You can see where transiting Pluto is, also where Mercury is, etc. So check out that course if you're ready to understand transits more specifically for yourself. Uh, because transits are what we talk about every Wednesday on this show, and it could be beneficial to know how they're working with you specifically. So as always, thank you so much for joining me for today's podcast episode. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for a new episode. You can find out more about me over at mollymccord.online, and I'm also on Instagram. I have a few Facebook pages, and I'm on YouTube. On YouTube, you can find the Gemini Solar Eclipse chart video, as well as all of the podcasts organized into different playlists. So I hope that helps with what you're looking for or what you want to learn next. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish you a beautiful week ahead. Take good care of your energy and your body. You've totally got this, and it's definitely an exciting ride here on planet Earth. So I'll see you back here very soon, and thank you so much for joining me.